Hi folks, Kevin here. Well, recently I posted a video about gathering wood from the woodshed out back and sort of a comical one, little music added to it, just the adventure of going out to the woodshed out back near the sugar shack, bringing the wood back, stacking it in the house. During that video, I mentioned, geez, we have a pretty efficient energy uh, capturing system. We have an energy storage system as well. And in permaculture, we're always talking about capturing and storing energy. And we live in a part of the country in central New York up near, uh, we're close to Oswego, New York, and we have a great deal of cloud cover from lake effect and snow cover. So as a result, we don't get as much solar gain during the wintertime when we really want to heat our house. So we do have a passive solar home that's super insulated, and it's insulated on the outside of the house as opposed to being in, in between the studs and all this is a post and beam construction. But the subject matter today is how we're capturing the heat. So what heat are we capturing? So there's three ways of non-living things that heat is transferred. Radiation, conduction, and convection. We feel that radiant heat when I'm standing in front of the wood stove that's going, and I can feel the radiant heat, that infrared heat, warming my body. With conduction, we know it when we touch it. Convection is when the heat uh, transfers out into the airspace, and we can utilize that heat by sucking it from the highest point in the building down to the lowest point of the, the building, below the floor level, put it into a large battery called a thermal mass unit, and store it there over time and let it gradually dissipate out. Now our system is designed so it cools during the summertime and warms during the wintertime. So we get pretty consistent temperatures. We like our temperature in the house around 78 to 80 degrees. Sometimes it gets up to 82 degrees. So how do we do this without it costing us a fortune? Well, I'm gonna turn around and show you a couple of the features of this system. Oh, I should mention this first. So it isn't just the solar heat that we're capturing. We're capturing heat from our wood stove. If we do cooking in an electric cook stops, uh, cooktop stove or uh, when the oven's going or even our body heat, all of the heat that gets into the air currents is gonna travel towards the, seek, the, <laughs> the ceiling, the peak of the house. And this is a 25 foot peak here. It's a cathedral ceiling. And we're just gonna take that heat and put it down below. So it doesn't matter what the source of energy is, when there's no sunshine, we can fire up the wood stove for a day and it can heat up the house for the next few days. So without any further ado, I'm going to go ahead, turn the camera around and show you some of the features of the system. Okay, this is our wood stove. It's a Yodel number no. three. Uh, wood stove. It's an older unit. We've had two of these over the last, I think, 34 years when we built the house. Uh, we have a tile floor because we have lots of animals, as you can see, <laughs> Mad Max going by. So, and we have a stone face. And the stone face is quite nice, but it, it hides actually two chimneys. I've got the lights on in here so we could see a little bit better. So, let me just see. So up there, we're gonna go up to the third floor in a couple of minutes, but I wanted to show you a couple of things. So let's see if this works. So I've got one of these. So it shows, all right, so our wood stove, it shows it is, oh, about 440 degrees at the top of the stove. Not very hot. We don't need too much heat in, in this place. So let's go ahead and look at the back of the, so I've got the, I don't know, is that showing up? <laughs> So I'm shooting the little infrared beam on the wall back there, and we're getting about 400, I mean 145, 144 degrees. Now that's the chimney that's exhausting the heat from the wood stove going up through the center of the other two chimneys. So here's another chimney over here, and that's down to about, about 108 degrees. Another chimney over here. So. That's all thermal mass, and I'll show you the side of this chimney. So here's actually the air conducting chimney, and that shows it's almost 84 degrees, 83.8 degrees. And then we have the thermal mass here, 
88 degrees, which is in much more close proximity to the wood stove itself. Okay, you're going to have to excuse all the dust and cobwebs. We don't get up here very often. There's our hot water tanks that we talked about in a previous video. And uh, there's the chimney right over there. So if I go around this area, first I'm going to go ahead and use a little infrared uh, gun here and show that the chimney temperature is oh, probably 100 and a little over 100 degrees right now. And the other chimney, one of the other chimneys, that temperature is 87 degrees, 88 degrees. So that's taking the heat that's radiating out and the convection currents, bringing all that warm air from the peak of the house right down into that, uh, into the plenum, which feeds the thermal mass unit. So I'm gonna come around the side here and see. So here we are looking down into the living room. And again, here's the thermal mass. Here's the opening to one side of the chimney. It's hard to get to the other side. And this shows, is it there? So it shows at this surface of the chimney, the one where we're doing the counter current exchange, it shows it is 94 degrees. So we're taking this warmth from that rises to the peak of the house, sucking it down, and we'll take a look at a couple other places now. Okay, I've opened up the little utility room door, and I had to place a light over here so you can see a little bit better down in here, and I've opened up basically the trap door in the floor. And so typically you can just walk into this room at my foot level across this trap door and, uh, and you don't know that there's this whole section underneath. So what we have here is the house is 24 by 40. It's an open envelope house and one half of the house is actually the large thermal battery. So the living room area here, we don't have the large thermal mass battery. It's not an active system. The other side of the house, this side of the house, is a large thermal battery underneath this whole half of the house. So in order to get down into the thermal battery, we have this, uh, this opening here that's right behind the chimney. Now, how can I do this where it's going to show up? So down here, I have a clean out access port. I don't know that you can see it. And you can see a couple of holes down there potentially where the uh, heat from the peak of the house comes down in. And then I just removed, please excuse, I just removed the filter, as you can see those aluminum pieces there around that fan housing. And that's basically just an attic fan. And that pumps the air that comes from the peak down into this little port area and pushes it into a stainless steel lined uh, wrapped washed stone thermal mass unit. It's very similar to the system that I installed in the uh, greenhouse that I haven't finished yet. So I'll link up above the left hand corner, uh, your right hand corner of this screen, an image to show the thermal mass unit that I'm building in that area. So there's one of our old cats in the windowsill and now we're looking at the east side of the house. It's, I don't know if you can see there's snow going on out there, but I want to show you right next to the wind, window casing, and these are very poor windows, what the temperature is there. Is this showing going to show up? So here we got 76 and a half degrees right there in the window casing to show you just how, how well it, it keeps the, the house at a, at a decent temperature. I'm into the master bathroom here. And we see the outside temperature is 19 degrees, it's 80 degrees in here. And now I'm going to check the temperature. Where is the darn spot here now? <laughs> All right, right there. And that's our, our duct coming up from. So the temperature coming out of our duct, coming up from the thermal mass unit, coming out of the unit, is 77.3 degrees right now. 
So our thermal mass unit down below is taking the heat, storing it, and, 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 and the air coming out into the rest of the house is 77.3 degrees right now. Okay, I'm in our den now, and uh, you can see our French doors facing south. And I'm going to come down to the floor now, and we're going to shoot the temperature on the floor. So here we are. This is our lowest temperature right here, 68.6 degrees. I'm not sure if you can see that. I don't know how to make that show up any better. So the conduction coming up through the thermal mass is not as, effic as efficient as our convection. So we'll come over to one of the vents that come up from the thermal mass, and that's down in this area. And that shows 69.8 degrees. I'm not sure that's showing up, but that's really the one of the grates that's coming up from down below uh, from the thermal mass unit. So I'm back now. I took my sweatshirt off. In a lot of the videos, you'll see that I'm sweating some if I'm shooting from inside or if I'm working hard outside. Um, and I'm letting the fire die out because it's just too hot in the house. So I just want to summarize. Uh, Joan had asked this question, and thanks for asking the question about this, this system. So the system really is a countercurrent heat exchange system. It's similar to when we see a bird, let's say a penguin, uh, who's in you know, you know, absolutely sub-zero temperatures a significant part of, the, of their time, especially when they're trying to uh, incubate their eggs, their egg. And they have to tuck their egg up, but their feet are in direct contact with the ice below. So how do they keep their feet from freezing? Well, one mechanism is their muscles are actually up higher in the limb where it's insulated and there's tendons attached to the muscle and that goes down into the soft tissue that exposed that is, it is, is insulated. But the most important thing is that they have a countercurrent exchange system. And we, you can have, base, and a countercurrent heat exchange system really requires intimate association with the two conducting Counter directional, counter current directions being intimately associated with each other, such as these three chimneys here. The central chimney conducts the heat from the wood stove up and outside of the peak of the house. The other two chimneys start at the very interior peak of the house, just a couple of feet down from it, suck that warm air and bring it down past all, th next to all of the heat and it gets hotter and hotter the central chimney as you get close to the wood stove and that takes that heat and it puts it down through a filter system going through a fan basically an attic fan and that pumps the air into a big rock bed now you can use water systems and in the greenhouse you can see i'm using water systems out there as well which are over three times more efficient than stone uh, but the stone is much more than we need in this house. We can leave this house for years and things, the pipes will never freeze in this house. It's designed to be that efficient. So we can store that heat even in these long, dark, overcast, snow-laden part of the country. We can create a really efficient system. The thing I like about this system is it doesn't take up a large footprint because the thermal mass battery is below the house. So that's number one. Like a rocket mass heater, it takes up a space, and you need to be fairly close to the far, farther you get away from that thermal mass unit, the, 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 the typically like a couch-like area that's in homes. Uh, the further you get away from that system, the more challenging it is to get the heat into other rooms of your house. This is a passive solar home and we can take other heat sources, use, use those two, same two chimneys, conduct the heat down into the thermal mass unit to store it for, for when we need it at other times. Another big advantage besides the, the space requirement, requirement of it, since it's below ground, we can have much more heat. And since we can store much more heat, then we can afford to heat every place in our house. 
And we have a doggy door out there, and I forgot to mention, right next to where we shot the, the temperature in the den area, there's a doggy door, and our dogs are quite large. So they go in and out all day long, the cats use that as well. So that goes right outside. So this is not, on purpose, an airtight home. We actually have purposeful heat, uh, cool air mixing, so it's not a, a, a nasty environment with air pollution inside the house. One, so two other key elements about this design are, one, it's super insulated. There's no bridging of studs, in, you know, insulation between studs, so we don't have heat loss through those studs. So the insulation wraps around the outside, the structural integrity of the house. So that's, and it's continuous, it goes from underground all the way up around over the peak and down. There's no breaks in the insulation there. And uh, there's one other point I wanted to make. Oh, probably the, the other, the, the, a very, very important point is I mentioned this is an open envelope house. So the peak, that third floor that I was up on, that my master bedroom on the other side of the house, the heat that rises in here can conduct and move its way right around. You have to have a, a circuit for the air to be able to flow around. You can't just take the thermal mass unit and pump it into a room and close that room off because you're not going to get the flow. So I hope that this was useful or helpful or informative in, 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 in the way that I desired it to be, to introduce another way if you're building a new place or designing a system, you can consider using a simple wood stove which can run for hours and put a thermal mass unit down below, having an open envelope, having an open circuit to your house or your structure that you're building and really cut your energy costs tremendously. For years, we haven't had to pay a heating or cooling bill. Now, we like the temperatures real warm during the winter months, or, you know, 80 degrees during the winter months because we're outside in the frigid cold air. Uh, so we want to warm up. In the summertime, when it's 80, 90 degrees out there, we want to come in where it's around 70 degrees. And so it's, it's a way of cooling ourselves off. Without running an air conditioner, it's just that attic fan it does everything for our whole house. Well, I hope that answers all your questions. If there's any more comments or questions, please uh, comment and let me know. Give me a thumbs up if you think this was valuable, and please share it with your friends. Thanks so much, folks, and have a great day. Bye-bye now.